Using plasma to grow plants seems outrageous, but supposedly it's real. Let's see in this Plasma Channel video. For millennia, agricultural production has been limited by how fast a plant can be grown. That's a barrier partly dictated by environment, partly by genetics. But is it possible that plasma can change all that? Plants are the backbone of our community, our culture, our earth. So growing them faster with the growing number of people is pretty important. One of these groups of plants were grown normally. The other group were treated with a special type of plasma. See the difference? Plasma comes in two families, thermal and non-thermal, otherwise known as cold plasma. Wow, there's definitely a difference. I've done a video in the past detailing how to produce cold plasma, as well as some of its commercial uses. Definitely check out the Plasma channel if you haven't. But in the past decade, a fascinating new field of study has emerged involving its use on the growth of plants, specifically speeding up germination times and initial growth rate. The implications for this are profound, affecting food crop growth, phytomedicine production, and land use efficiency. Whew. Big stuff. Now, I'm a plant nerd, so this is particularly interesting to me. But if you are, just think about all the ramifications that this could have on everyday life. After building a specialized growing platform and growing both wheatgrass and radish seeds for the past couple of weeks, I've encountered some really interesting results, which are going to blow you away. Let's get into it, I'm excited. So the science behind cold plasma treated seeds is still in its infancy. But before I dig into that new field, I think it's important to note how cold plasma differs from normal plasma. When a thermal plasma is created, it consists of high energy electrons, ions, and neutral atoms, all roughly the same energy level and temperature. So the plasma is electrically conductive and very, very hot. In cold plasma, on the other hand, electrons are high energy and temperature, but the ions and neutral atoms remain at a much lower temperature, even as low as room temperature. I go further into how to create cold plasma in a video that I'll link down below, but it's important to note that cold plasma is composed of electrically charged ions, just like the normal thermal plasma, except it doesn't heat up a surface. It doesn't produce much heat. Ah, now therein lies the secret to speeding up plant growth. Could cold plasma also be the solution to regular energy problems that we have? Unlimited energy? I don't know, but maybe we'll see in our lifetime. Digging into the available science, it's pretty clear that cold plasma holds serious promise for plant growth. Okay, let's see what the current science has to say about treating plants with cold plasma. As stated by the International Journal of Molecular Sciences, cold plasma enhances seed germination and promotes long-term growth by increasing seedling biomass, the production of plant hormones, and the expression of genes related to defense and drought stress. Okay, okay, those are all excellent points. A study by the University of Tehran found the ultimate root length was increased 56 plus or minus 3% in the seeds treated for 60 seconds. We love more roots. And an Egyptian study published in the Open Journal of Applied Sciences found seedling shoot length was 13 centimeters for untreated melon, while it was significantly enhanced to about 25 centimeters for one plasma treatment group. Nice. Strong roots leads to strong shoots. That is upwards of 50% increase in growth. I know. And there are dozens of studies that indicate the beneficial effects of cold plasma. Those range from increased chlorophyll and photosynthesis production, increased disease resistance, that's a big one. It also activates the actual growth genes within the plant to make it grow faster. And then also the seeds itself, it makes the shells hydrophilic so they absorb water faster. Is plasma just the ultimate cure to plant problems? Maybe plasma can fix some of my problems too. <laughs> These are all things that are measurable and have an impact on agriculture. So I want to see if I can match these numbers or beat them. This was going to require custom growing chambers, so I got right to work. To find the right seeds, I headed to a place called Sky Nursery north of Seattle. I like this place because it's really tranquil. Radishes and wheatgrass are what I'm looking for simply because they are the fastest growing seeds and allow for my experiment to show results quicker. The sprout business is super easy to start, which is wheatgrass. When people start micro farming, they farm radishes. So these two types of seeds definitely make sense. For the containers, I visited my friends at Plasma Plastics and loaded up on acrylic, then headed home for the biggest acrylic build of my life. Plasma channel, more like plastic channel. <laughs>
for the soil, Sky Nursery recommended this little gem. Whoever the marketing genius is behind this product really liked plants. You could say they loved plants. With the soil in hand, I filled the container all the way to the bottom of the marked paper, gave it a mild pat down, and called it good. <sighs> this came together pretty easily, which almost never happens on this channel, so I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, here's what this is all about. The container is 16 inches long to match the length of the full spectrum lighting up top. Now those 16 inches will be divvied out amongst 10, maybe 12 seeds spaced apart. And the paper I glued in the back there, well those lines are reference marks for growth of each seed. So I've got the light up top, the soil down below, basically everything I need for controlled growth of a plant. One more time again and again and again. Now I just need to make three more of them. So it's the next day and you can see I have four identical growing chambers laid out on the table. That's because there's one control and three tests. This is a real experiment. I'm excited to see the results. On the left is the control group and it'll have zero treatment. Next will be 30 seconds of cold plasma exposure, followed by 60 seconds of exposure. And the final treatment group will be 120 seconds of exposure. I'll break down each chamber into six seeds of wheatgrass on the left and six seeds of radish on the right. So the changing variable is the plasma, which may have seemed obvious, but how is he going to make the plasma? Now the real question is, where do I get cold plasma, and how do I treat these seeds with it? That is where this cold plasma wand comes in handy. I built it for a past video about cold plasma, and it can be used like a pen. When it's attached to a high-frequency power source, around 10 kilovolts AC, and provided a steady flow of helium gas flowing into the back end of the wand, it produces a microjet of cold plasma, and since it's handheld, it's perfect for this experiment. Dang, how cool does that plasma pen look? Well, I've got the high voltage, the wand, and the helium. That makes a cold plasma source. To keep things organized, I created a little cheat sheet to organize all my seeds. Doing an initial test, I ran into some issues with the seeds being blown around by the helium, meaning I needed a special holder. So this is what I came up with, and honestly, it did the job great. Here you can see me treating the first set of grass seeds, which are staying right in place. During each treatment, I did my best to expose each seed to the required length of time. Afterwards, into their little cell they went. I then repeated the process for the radish seeds, which just barely stayed in place, but, you know, these were trickier, but treatment went smoothly. Afterwards, they went into their appropriate cell. This exact process was duplicated for both sets of seeds for the 60-second treatment group, where they joined their 30-second friends next door, soon followed by 120 seconds. It's like he's using a pen with a torch on it to tickle these seeds. How exciting is that? Looks so fascinating. This next part was a variable I forgot to take into consideration until last minute. So mm, I acknowledge this next part may not have been done the most scientifically. I tried my best to plant all the seeds about one centimeter underneath the soil and approximately three centimeters apart, but it's likely there was some variability here. Nah, he might have messed up. This is a pretty important part of the whole process. I think seeds a certain length from the top of the soil is what makes most of them grow well or not well. But we'll see it through to the end. I still want to see the results. Afterwards, all four growth chambers were placed in a secluded corner of my room where I set up the power, connected all lighting, and made sure everything was in working order. The only thing left to do was to turn the system on. Here you can see the whole setup in its entirety, with identical growing conditions for each group, totally primed for growth. This would be a really interesting experiment to run, and I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I was in for a surprise. I mean, no matter what happens, what he built looks aesthetically pleasing. For the first 24 hours, I just let the seeds soak in the wet soil, at which point I began data collection keeping track of growth at intervals of every 12 hours. And this would help me keep track of that growth. With 24 hours already passed, I marked off the first two rows, hung the chart directly above the growing chambers, and began my long wait. 36 hours in, nothing. And 48 hours, also nothing. Or so I thought. Amount of water is pretty important well, but as long as he kept it consistent throughout all of them, should be fun. But upon closer inspection, we've got contact. First sign of growth. And it also looks like 120 also has its first germination. Let's go! Revising the data above, the 32nd group and the 122nd group have sprouted first. 12 hours later at 60 hours in, all the chambers were showing signs of growth. And I, I honestly had no idea that grass seeds would grow this fast. Um, they grew a little too fast 
and I should have built taller growing chambers. Hindsight is 2020. All right, so this is really impressive. The 32nd group is taking the lead with one seedling at 18 millimeters in height, and a second popped up and is now already at six millimeters in height. In close second is the control with one seedling at 16 millimeters in height, the second at about six or seven, and the third is at four millimeters in height. 60 seconds had its first growth at 8 millimeters as well as 8 millimeters of growth for 120 seconds, and the first control radish also sprouted. With the passing of 12 more hours, 72 hours in, the grass seeds had already overtaken their growth chambers. Like, like I said, I had no idea things would grow this fast, but I just rolled with it. One thing was certain though, the 120 second group, yeah, it, it wasn't rolling at all. In fact, it was busy being dead. Remember, the grass isn't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. For the next two days, what followed was a cat and mouse game of rapid growth and data keeping until I had approximately five days of data. Originally, I'd planned on seven days worth of data, but the grass seeds just grew way too fast for all the groups. The radishes, on the other hand, they didn't even show up to the damn party. Only two out of the 24 I planted sprouted, so I got no data on those. However, I got plenty of data on the grass seeds and the results. It would be great to see this experiment replicated or improved upon with radish seeds or other fast growing seeds, maybe like lettuce. First up, the control. This represents growth under normal conditions. You can see growth starts at hour 60 and a linear fit gives us 0.9 millimeters per hour of growth on average. Next is the first treatment group subjected to 30 seconds of cold plasma. Growth starts 12 hours earlier at hour 48, and a linear fit gives us 1.4 millimeters per hour growth on average. Moving up from the 30 second treatment group to 60 seconds of cold plasma shows different numbers. Growth starts at hour 60, and a linear fit gives us one millimeter per hour just above the control. Geez, as the numbers grow up, the grass is just busting out of the container more and more. And then the wasteland, 120 second treatment group. Only three sprouted, and you'll notice something really interesting here. Each seed grew with a split stalk, like, like mutated split. Taking a look at the scarce data I did collect while growth starts 12 hours earlier at hour 48, the average rate of growth for this group was miserable. So essentially, the 120 group was a wasteland of mutated half-breeds. Hmm. hmm. It seems like there are diminishing returns, though, at a certain point. It would be great to see where that line of diminishing returns really starts. I do have to acknowledge, though, that the way I'm calculating average hourly growth could be done differently. If I average each seed's growth individually from their separate germinations to the end of the experiment, we end up with slightly different numbers. Using best line of fit, the graphs you saw, we end up with this. The 32nd treatment group experienced significant growth over the control, and the 120 was fully detrimental. However, using the second method, the 60-second treatment group experienced the most significant increase in growth over control. Hmm, what's better though, the 30 or the 60-second? And if there's anybody who understands the importance of this, it would be Algae Man Joel. So I gave him a ring. Joel, my man, what's up? Hey, Jay, how we doing? Good, dude, I was really inspired by your huge algae experiment. So you're kind of the expert on this. Oh, this is that guy that used algae for an oxygen producer. This is a pretty good video too. I did a bit of an experiment myself where half the plants have plasma treatment and half them don't. What do you think? I, I mean, it sounds like a really cool concept. I'd love to see it. It, literally, literally right here, right here. Oh, oh, those are, the, that's, I uh, see, I was just confused because, you know, I had like big, uh, yeah, that's, I am you know, I mean, we all got to start somewhere. So when are you going to start like the real experiment though? Like once they get past the seedling phase. Mocking him for the size of this experiment is so funny. You're not proud of me, are you? <laughs> Based off this data, my experiment indicates that cold plasma treatment on seeds may increase germination speeds by about 12 hours and lead to growth rates which are upwards of 55% faster. Shit, <laughs> that's significant. Like I said, this has real world implications for crop growth and land use. I mean, if we can grow food faster, wow. That really is significant. Now time for a more variety of plants and plants grown to full form when they bear fruit. If you like this video, maybe leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.